Sixth Station by Joe Hisaishi. From, of course, the film Spirited Away. I just finished watching this film a few days ago, which I think is why I'm a little bit revved up to play it and teach it to you now. Uh, so as usual, I'll begin by playing for you the first 15 seconds or so of the music, and then I'll start from the beginning, bar by bar. And I'll show you how you can learn it alongside me. So here we go, the sixth station. This is what it sounds like. when he plays this piece he has a very frank and open and um, simple sound it's not at all behind any kind of veil of fog or mist it's really quite present so that's what you can hear from me as well we'll begin with the opening little arpeggiation with both the hands here it is I should also say that uh, while a few of the sections of this tutorial series are on YouTube, the full tutorial series is on my library. So if you want to finish this off, if you start with me here and you want to finish this off, that's where you're going to have to go to do it. Uh, worry not, there's a free trial. You can have a look around, see if you'd like it. Um, during the free trial, you'll have, of course, access to this piece and everything else I've ever done. And if at the end of it you don't like it, no hard feelings, you can uh, walk away without being charged or anything like that. And if you like it, stick around. We'll learn a lot more. So, our opening is this. Five, two on the left, one, three, five on the right. When you're playing this sort of harp-like arpeggiation, one easy way of learning this so that you can't really detect where there is a divide between the hands. It's very easy for it to kind of sound like kind of divided up and not perfectly spaced. One easy way of learning it is start from the last note of the right hand and move into the right. The last note of the left, into the right. If you learn that very well, then adding the previous notes, even if it's more than just one, becomes a lot easier. And then it's nice and even, nice and smooth. Don't worry about the rhythm for now. Let's just have a look at the notes. Hold that for a bit. Pedal helps. And then... So that is five, two, and one. That's your first position. Think of it as one position of three notes. You don't have to reach this. Just know it as a single position. When you play it, I would suggest moving from left to right, second finger pivot on second, so that you reach G comfortably with the thumb. You can see there's a very smooth movement, swing to the right. And the second position is one, two, and five. Don't think of all of these as individual notes and you have to memorize them individually. Think of them in terms of groups. This is one unit, and this is the next. And then you just stitch them up. Hold for a little while. Okay. next one is almost exactly the same, except the second finger, instead of on B, is now on C. Right hand comes in with two notes. 
two and three. Next. Three. Four. Right hand reaches across to three on F sharp. And then two on E. And the left hand is now able to begin the next move. So learn all of that slowly, rewatch as necessary, and just know, you know, the order in which all of this happens. Once you learn it pretty well, just up to here, I'll give it to you with counts. So I'll just count each of the bars. It's in 4-4 four, four time, common time. So this is what we get with the counts, nice and slow. One, two, and three, and four, and one, and two. Also slow this video down, don't forget. You can slow it down and watch a little slower if you need to be able to keep up, but make sure you can do it exactly like that. Moving on. So here we're gonna have five and two. That's your first grouping. And then Is your next grouping. Four, one, two, and five. Think of it in this position. Once you learn that, then it's very easy to just pick out the notes you have to play in the correct order. positions. Five, three, one is one position. And then is the next. Notice that from three to one is almost an octave. One note shy of an octave. Even if you have a small hand, make sure to pivot freely. You don't really have to connect it so intently. The pedal is going to help you as long as you're moving freely and fluidly to the right. And then begin again. A little something different with the right. left hand is the same as we started with, five pivot on two, one, on two and five. The right hand, five, two, four, hold that for a little bit, then three, one, two. All of these notes you can consider to be in one position. Take a moment and learn that exactly as I showed it. And then when you put it together, the left hand begins on its own, and then the hands align.
right hand alone. So there's your next four bars finished. So let me play for you these four bars that I just showed to you with the counts. So you can contextualize this a little bit better. So from here. One and two. stitched up. While all of this uh, rhythmic scaffolding is important, you know, to be able to make sure everything is where it needs to be, um, this is also quite a free piece. So once you have the general sense of the rhythm, you don't have to be too mathematical about it. You can just kind of use your intuition and your musical um, instincts to kind of guide you here. It's kind of important for a lot of people, especially beginners, to you know carve out these stakes in the ground to make sure the one is where it needs to be, the two is where it needs to be, etc. Right, the counts. But once you've done that to a reasonable degree, you can do away with that scaffolding and just use your um, intuition, um, at least for the section that you've learned. Let me play it for you once more from the very beginning, and I'll give you the pedaling. I'll narrate the pedaling. The pedal is down for that, of course. And then change. that in the next part of the tutorial. Come join me over there and we'll continue forward and I'll show you the rest of this beautiful little work. See you soon.